Amen. Glory to God. What a good day. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Glory. They are. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand up, open up in prayer. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, for tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that will go forth in this place. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place right now. We know, Holy Spirit, that you have been sent to us to lead us and to guide us in all truth and to show us things to come. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void. And everything that we do, Father, we will give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because it's in your glorious and mighty majestic name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory to God. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we uh, we started on this message here uh, uh, like five weeks ago. And tonight we're on lesson number six on this particular topic. And I pray that uh, that you will get a hold of what the Spirit of God is saying so that it will benefit you, your life, amen, your ministry in every area, amen. Now, I want to sing a song. I want to sing a song. I really do. Amen. And, uh, they're going to pray that everything work out all right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. And you're the road to hope when my life goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God And you bore the cross And you bear the scars And you are my bright and shining star You gave me sight that I might see The kind of man that I should be you came and died to set me free, Almighty God. And you bore the cross, oh, and you bear the scars. You are my bright and shining star. You gave me sight that I might see kind of man that I should be. You came and died to set me free. Almighty God, Jesus. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. 
You're the one I depend on And you're the road to hope When my light goes dim When the waves of doubt come crashing in You're my anchor in the troubled storm Almighty God You're my joy, you're my peace You're my comfort in time of need You're my refuge, you're my rock You're the one I depend on You're the road to hope when my life goes dim When the waves of doubt come crashing in You're my anchor in the troubled storm Almighty God You're my joy, you're my peace You're my comfort each time of need You're my refuge, you're my rock You're the one I depend on You're the road to hope when my life goes ill When the waves of doubt come crashing in You're my anchor in the troubled storm Almighty God You're my anchor in the troubled storm Almighty God Jesus Amen He's my anchor in the troubled storm How about you? Hallelujah Glory <clears throat> well, we started this lesson on last Sunday. No, not, not last Sunday. It was five, uh, five weeks ago. Just tonight is lesson number six. And, uh, and I believe that this is a very, very important lesson for us as the body of Christ to take a hold to and apply to our lives. Amen. Because see, Jesus not only come or came to the earth to bring us salvation, he came to show us the way of God. Or you might say to demonstrate to us the kingdom of God. Amen. And now I believe that as we continue in this lesson, we're going to see that God want us to come to realize that when God created man, he gave man, he created man in this very same image. Because he says it right there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So God created man in his own image and after his likeness created him. Male and female created he them. Amen. Now notice now, notice now, he gave them power and dominion over all the work of his hand. Amen. After he created them, he gave them power and dominion. He gave them dominion over all the work of, the, of, all the work of his hand. Now, as we come to the New Testament, as we come to the New Testament, I want you to turn your Bible with me, amen, because see, Jesus passed on his healing anointing and the power to those that followed him. Jesus passed on, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't keep it, he delegated it he passed it on to his followers, or you might say to his disciples. Amen. And that power, that anointing, that, that he has left for the church to continue to work, it is still available today. Amen. And this is why it's so important, because you see, God want you and me to continue the work that he did when he walked the earth. When his son Jesus walked the earth. Amen. How are you going to do that? By imitating him. 
imitate him. Ephesians 5, 1, that be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Amen. He wants you to imitate him. He wants you to be like him. Amen. So the Bible says that in the book of Matthew chapter 10, if you don't mind turning there with me, please. Matthew chapter 10. Amen. Matthew chapter 10. Go there with me if you don't mind. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 10, the 12 disciples sent out with authority and power. Amen. In Matthew chapter 10. Look with me now. Glory to God. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see some things that we, you know, we probably seen before, but we probably didn't really notice them. But I believe that this lesson is going to help you or to help us to come to understand what God was doing, what God was saying. Amen. So in here in, in Matthew chapter 10, amen, I want you to look at verse number one first. Matthew chapter 10, verse number one, it says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, we need to we need to hear what he's saying now. He gave them power against unclean spirits and to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Now, who did this? Who gave the power for this? Jesus did. Who did he give it to? He gave it to his disciples. Why? Because he wanted them to have an experience of walking in the power of the Spirit of God like he walked in. Amen. The same as he walked in. Now look at verse number seven. Amen. Verse number seven. And he and as he and as ye go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then look at verse number eight. He said, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you receive, freely give. Amen. See Jesus was expecting are is, and still expecting the church to continue the work that he be, that he did when he was in the earth, Amen. He's still expecting us to to continue the work that he that he did while he was in the earth. Now it's going to take it's going to take you uh, it's going to take you. I'm going to say it like this: You're going to have to understand how faith works. <laughs> You're going to have to understand how faith works. You're going to have to understand how to apply what God is saying to you. Amen. How to apply what God is saying to you. Now look again right here. Because see, in the book of Luke now, that was the book of Matthew. Now let's look in the book of Luke. Let's look at chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Amen. And look at verse number 1 here. Verse number 1 and 2. Then he called the twelve disciples together. Now this is the now this is he did it in Matthew. Now he's doing it here in the book of Luke. Amen. This is very important. Because you see, if you're gonna if you're gonna carry out the Great Commission, then you gotta be able or be willing to step out of your comfort zone and do what Christ did. Amen. And and what I mean by that, you got the you got the you got the practice walking like Christ walked. You got to practice uh, being like Christ was when he was in earth. How was Christ? He was not moved with fear. He was not moved with because of circumstances. He was not moved because of loud people, loud voices. Amen. He was only moved by what he saw his father do. Because what he saw his father do, he did likewise. Now this is so important because you see you can't do above that which, what Jesus did. You can only do what he did. Amen. Because he said the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works these shall you do because I go to my father. Amen. And so we going to do what Christ called us to do. So we got to learn the principles that he operated in. And then we need to apply those principles as we 
minister as we carry out the assignment that God has given us. Now you might say, well, Pastor, you know, you're talking nonsense right now because all that, you know, that's, that's been done away. Let me tell you something. It's not been done away with. Amen. It's not been done away. When we, when we minister the word of God and when we believe what we are saying, the word of God said, you can have what you say. Amen. And so if God said it, and if you believe it so much to the point that you went into active on what he said, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get results. <laughs> you're going to get results. Amen. And that's why it's so important that we understand what he said so that when we begin to act on what he said, we can see the results that God intended for us to receive. So he said, Luke chapter 9, verse number 1, said, Then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority. Notice what he said now. Power and authority. Amen. Over all devils. Amen. How many? All. Over all devils. And to cure diseases. And then verse number two says, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. Now, we see that God gave the disciples through Jesus the same ability to minister to the sick and to stand and take a stand against demonic spirits. Amen. So if Jesus were able to take a stand against demonic spirits, amen, and to heal the sick, don't you know that God wants you to be able to do the same thing? He wants you to take a stand for righteousness. He wants you to take a stand to minister his word to whomsoever that has a need of it. And that's everyone. Amen. God wants to do something right now in our lives. And he, had, and he expected us to take heed to his word. Amen. He expects us to begin to have a desire to walk like Christ walked in the earth. You say, well, pastor, I don't know. That's, yes, it is possible. It is possible. Amen. He said all things are possible to him that believe. Mark 9, 23. All things are possible to him that believe. Amen. And he says in, in, in John 14, 12, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than he shall he do because I go to my Father. Amen. Then he says in Mark chapter 16, and verse number 20, and the Lord went with them, worked with them, doing what? Confirming the word with signs following. God expects us to, to, to honor what he has given us to bring healing and deliverance to our nations. Amen. To the nations of the world. Amen. And he has given you the authority. He has given you the power. The same power and authority he gave the disciples of old. You have that same authority. You have that same power. You just got to learn what you have. And begin to walk in it. It's yours. It's yours. It's already yours. You just got to learn what you have. And learn how to walk in it. Amen. And then notice what he said in Luke chapter 10. Because the Lord, see, he, the, he, he appointed other 70. <clears throat> in, in, Luke chapter, in, in, Mark, in uh, Luke chapter 10. He appointed other 70 also, and he sent them out. Amen. He gave them authority and power, just like he gave the first initial 12. Amen. In Luke chapter 9, verse number 1 and 2. Amen. So now in, in Luke chapter 10, he called it 70 more. Amen. Because the workload becomes so, 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 so large. Amen. That he needed more disciples, more people that was willing to go out in his name. Now, notice I said to go out in his name because you see, it's the power reside in if we operate in his name. We operate according to his plan. Amen. Not according to our plan. Not, not. It's, there's no power in my name. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Amen. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. So we know that the power resides in the name of Jesus, and he expects us to utilize this anointing, to exercise the gift that he has given us, to bring deliverance and healing to the hurting people around us. You might say, well, pastor, what about the storms? What about the hurricanes? What about the tornadoes? What about the earthquakes and all that? 
Well, he said all these things will come. Amen. But don't, he said, but fear not, for I am with you. For I am the Lord, your God. Amen. I will help you. I will uphold you. I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. Amen. And that's what he said in Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. Amen. So now God has given us the tools that we need to carry out the assignment. But notice what he said in Luke chapter 10 now. Because you see, there are so many people, well, we've been we've been in church all our life. We uh, we don't we don't believe that way. Well, that's probably that, that, that's probably why you, you are, that's probably why you walk around sick all the time, because you don't believe this way. Amen. You know, I used to be sick. When I started believing this way, I tell you what. I don't get when the, when sickness try to come upon me. I, I I take a stand against it. Why? Because I know it don't belong to me. And you can take a stand against it too, once you learn the truth concerning it. Amen. You can take a stand against it yourself once you learn the truth against it. Amen. Once you learn the truth concerning it. Amen. So in Luke chapter ten, verse number one said. Luke chapter ten, verse number one, and it says, "After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent." Them, those where he said, and sent them, how he sent them, two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Amen. Whether he himself would come. Amen. So he 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 called, he anointed, and he appointed 70 more disciples, and he sent them out. Amen. The same way he sent out the first 12. Amen. And he sent these out the same way. Now, you know, he wasn't just relying upon his first 12 disciples that he had called. Amen. He was looking at the whole majority. Not just <clears throat> the first 12, but he's looking at all of his followers. Those that will follow him with their whole heart. Those that will, will, will commit to the assignment that he had given them, he watched over his word in all of their lives to perform it, amen, to bring it to pass. And so now we see here that, we see here that in, in Luke chapter 10, again, Luke chapter 10 again, now let's look at verse number nine. Verse number, let's look at verse number eight and nine. Verse number eight and nine. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, Eat such things as are set before you. See, this is why. This is why when I go to these countries, I I, I try I, I try to eat carefully. Amen. I watch what I eat, but at the same time, I can't operate in fear even when I'm eating. I have to operate in faith even while I'm eating. Why? Because the word of God just the word of God told me to. Amen. He said, "No, let me read it to you one more time. Let me read it to you one more time." Notice what he said right here. Now we'll be at chapter 10, verse number 8 again. And, 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 and into whatsoever city ye enter, this is Luke chapter 10, verse number 8, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Eat such things as are set before you. Amen. You know, when, we most, when we go out like this, when we go out like this, we, we mostly like to eat in restaurants because restaurants is an international place where people come from all, all parts of the world. Amen. And they, especially, you know, uh, and, and they, they, they sit down and eat lunch and stuff like that. So we like to eat at restaurants, amen, hotels, I mean, because they have good, they have decent food in the hotel. <laughs> Most majority of them do, <laughs> amen. Then you got verse number nine says, and heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you, amen. See, when does the kingdom arrive? The kingdom arrive when you, when you get there. Amen. It's, it's, arrived, it's, it's coming, it's arriving in you. Amen. You are the one that's going to declare the kingdom of God is coming nigh unto you. You're the one that's going to declare, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. And then you're going to minister to the sick. And the Bible says you're going to cleanse them, you're going to raise them, you're going to cast out devils. Amen. See, this is all part of the Great Commission. To go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel. Amen. This is all part of the Great Commission. Amen. So we don't need to be afraid to do what God has called us to do. Now let's look at verse number 19. Luke chapter 10. Verse, let's look at verse 18 and 19. 
verse 18 and 19. In Luke chapter 10, amen. Now see, verse number one, chapter 10, we see that he called 70 more disciples. He empowered them and delegated them to go forth and commanded them to go forth and to minister and to declare what he had said. And amen. Then now right here, over here, let's back up verse number 17. I mean, verse number 17. Now notice what happened now. The disciples, that 70, that 70 disciples that he sent out. Now notice what happened right here, verse number 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, notice what he said now, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now notice, the devil was not subject to them through their names, but through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why when, you, when you're when going out to minister, when you're going out to, to, to carry out the great commission, you're not walking in your strength, you're not walking in your own abilities, you are walking in the name of the Lord. Remember what he said in Ephesians chapter 6, Verse number 10, he's a fighter, my brother, be strong in the Lord. He never told us to be strong in ourselves. Amen. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And in the power of his might. And, 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 and now folks, now that's so important. We need to understand that because when you go out trying to demonstrate the kingdom of God and, and you don't use the name of Jesus Christ, you're not operating from the standpoint of Jesus Christ being the, being the head. Amen. And you've been part and just a part of the body, amen. You go, you gonna step out and get yourself in trouble. But when you recognize, when you understand that Jesus is the head, you and you are part of the body, and, and that you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now get this right here, folks. Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. When you understand this, you can see yourself rising above the storms of life. You can see yourself understanding that God has made a way out of no way. Amen. Where there seemed to be no way, God has already made a way. Why? Because you honored him by stepping in to that which he had called you to walk in. So he said, verse number 18, he said, and he, that's verse number 17 through 19. Let's read that. Let's read it that way. 8, 17 through 19. And the seven returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Verse number 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. See, he was, he, was, he was looking back at the time in the book of Ezekiel, no, not e, e, that, yeah, Ezekiel 28, when, when Satan was cast down, amen, and in the book of Isaiah, when, when he was cast down, you see, you call it Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 12, amen, we see that, we see the, 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 the things that, that Lucifer did, amen, as he, before he was cast down, it, 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 they gave an instruction, he gave us, he gave us instruction, what happened? Amen. So we see that God knows all. He sees all. And right here he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Amen. And verse number 19 he said, Behold, I give unto you power. Woo, glory to God. See, Satan had fallen, but now you've been, you've been given power over him. Amen. Because he's a fallen angel. But you are a risen you are a risen soul who have opened up your heart to Jesus Christ. Now you have become alive in him and you've been given authority and power over that fallen angel, Satan, Lucifer. Amen. You've been given power over him. Look what it says, verse number 19. Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. What is he referring to? He referred to demons, demonic spirits, and the kingdom of darkness. And you've been given power over this. That's why God wants you to understand. You don't have to be afraid once you operate in his name. He said, and the seven went out and be, and, 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 and in, seven, in verse number 17, and they returned with great joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Through your name. See, God wants you to walk in the authority. God wants you to walk in their power. God wants you to demonstrate the kingdom of God amongst those whom you have been sent to minister to. Amen. I believe this is going to be the message I'm going to share with the ministers when I get to Pakistan because we're going to have time to speak to the ministers. I'm going to share this message with them because they need to know this. This is going to be their time. This is going to be for them. Glory to God. <laughs> The Lord just put that in my heart, so I'm going to I'm going to do that. Amen. So now look what it says right here. Look what it says right. Here. And, uh, and and we see right here is that all all believers throughout church history have access to Jesus' power. 
All churches throughout history have access to Jesus' power. But how are you going to have access to Jesus' power? Oh, my God. It's when you are born again. Notice what he said now. Uh, 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 John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Glory to God. And John chapter 14. This is very, this is very important. This is very important. John chapter 14. Look what he said in verse number Hallelujah. Oh, that's chapter 13. I wonder what to read right. John chapter 14. Here we go. John chapter 14. Now look right, look what it said right in verse number 10. John chapter 14, verse number 10. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He what? He doeth the works. Amen. Verse number 11. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. Because I go to my Father. Hallelujah. I like this right here, verse number 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, glory to God, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. I will do it. Amen. See, God is expecting you to believe what you're asking for. He expecting you not just to believe what you're asking for, but have faith for what you're asking for. Be willing to act on what you're asking for. Amen. Begin to take a step of faith Amen. Even out into, oh my God, the, the twilight zone if necessary. Just take that step of faith and believe that what you've asked for is already granted to you and just take it by faith and run with it. Just start, just start praying for the sick. Just start praying for the sick. Start speaking to the dead. Command them to rise up. Amen. You don't know if it's going to happen or not, but you don't, you'll never know unless you do it. Amen. Because I remember when because I remember when I, God first started to use me in this way, I was going to the hospitals on a on a weekly basis. Amen. And I would pray for the one, you know, we had like like a five story hospital, five floors. Amen. And I would go start on one floor, and I would pray on. I would go to every room on that first floor, and I would pray for everyone that wanted prayer. Amen. And and there was many things happening. God was doing great miracles, great miracles. During that, during this time, Amen. And then I will, when I will leave. I will only pray for one, one floor a week, and I will leave that for that week. And I will pray for that same floor. All the people that I minister to, I will pray for them for a whole week until I go back to the next week, Amen. Then I will pray for the floor number two, Amen. And I will pray for all the people, Amen. And I walked in this one room. I walked in this one room, and his man and his wife was laying, was sitting down. His man was laying in the bed with his leg propped up, and uh, and his wife was standing outside the bed. And I walked into the room. I said, "God has sent me to you." They threw up their hands and started shouting, and I thought they were running me out of the room. And so I turned around and ran out of the room. They said, "Oh no! Please come back! Come back!" Amen. And so I went back into the room and I said, "God, I, I said God has sent me to you today for you to receive your healing." Amen. And when I said that, my hands started to burn like fire. I mean, it's just like a coal of fire begin to rest right in the palm of my hand. And it's been doing it ever since. Been doing it ever since when, I need, when I'm praying for the sick. Amen. Been doing it ever since. And so now, now I laid my hand. I said, God, and, I said, and he told me his problem. He said he had, had an operation on his leg. And so he, he had two operations on his leg. And they want to have a third operation on his leg. And he was praying and asking God for help. Amen. And so he said, now when, and, you, and you come... And it's an answer to my prayer. Amen. And so I, I, I walked up to the bed and I, I laid my right hand on this man's leg and I raised my left hand toward heaven and I began to pray in the name of Jesus and, and the fire of God started burning my hand. I, I, I jerked my hand off. I said, you feel that? He said, yeah, I feel that. I said, you're healed in Jesus' name. This man just started shaking that leg. I said, look at God. <laughs> he started shaking that leg and I, and, and I tell you what happened to me after that. I got ran out of the hospital because the doctors didn't like what was going on. They, 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 they ran me out of the hospital because people started getting healed. People started getting delivered. People started being set free. So they, they ran me out of the hospital because they were starting to lose money. 
Amen. It started to lose money. Amen. But uh, but I but I would sneak back in there on next uh, next next week and I would do it again. I was normally no, doing it on Saturdays. I was normally doing it on Saturdays. Amen. So I run back up there again and I would and I would pray for the next floor. Amen. In the hospital, and I would see and I would see and now, now this time. This time I was coming out. I was coming out of the hospital. After after got done praying with everyone on that floor. Now this time as I was coming out of the hospital, there was a family of people sitting right there in the lobby. They was all crying. I mean they was they was crying. Then they said, Would you please pray for my mother? You know, you know, I started I now when I, I was walking out going to the elevator and just like I was I was brought to a standstill. I couldn't move. Like a magnet or something that grabbed my feet, holding me down and one would not let me move. Amen. I couldn't move. Then like some someone grabbed my head and pointed toward that family. And I started talking to that family. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you just begin to be sincere with God, stop playing a game with God. So everything's going to be all right. And he's and, and as I was doing it, I saw as it was stars. You ever see anybody when they hit hit the head they have stars? Amen. What is I see it as it was stars going into this man that was in that with that family. Amen. And it was just, it was the spirit of God. It was the spirit of God, and when I got done, I shake my head and I said, "You, you heard what God said? Now go stop playing game with him." And I walked on out of the hospital. Amen. But I came back the very next day. That was unusual for me, but I was compelled by the spirit of God to go back the very next day. And when I come back the next day, I went back to that same floor, and these people were standing at the elevator waiting on me to get off, like they knew I was coming. I said, "Wow, what is this?" Amen. They said, "Well, I don't." They said, "How you doing, preacher?" I said, "I'm doing pretty good." They said, "I don't know what I don't know what you did to my brother yesterday, but when you got done talking with us, he went out in the chapel. He started praying. He started jumping, and shouting all over the chapel." She said, "Will you please come pray for my mother?" I said, "Yeah, I'll pray for your mom." And so I went. They, they said, well, "I said, where's your mom at?" I thought she was in one of the rooms, but she was in ICU on life support. And uh, and all of them was there, giving their last respect. They were all of them was there. They was all crying and giving, and they knew that they, they, they weren't gonna see their mom no more. They was all there giving their last respect, coming to show their last respect. And they said, "Will you please go pray for my mom?" I said, "Yeah, I go pray for your mom." And so I went in there and I prayed for the mom. She had all these tubes all over her and in her. Amen. I laid one hand on on her on her right hand. Uh, yeah, it was on her right hand. And then I, I, I raised, I raised my left hand toward heaven, and I prayed for this woman. I said, God, in the name of Jesus, bring this woman out of this, out of this coma. God, I just thank you, Father, that you love her, Father, that you will restore, you will restore her right now, Father. Bring her out of this coma. I thank you for it. I began to praise God, and I walked out of the hospital. I didn't know what else to say. I didn't know what to say, but I came back the very next day. She was out of coma. She had to woke up from the coma. Amen. And then, so I prayed again. Three times God brought me up there for that particular family. Three times in a row, he brought me up there for that particular family. And I laid my hands on her again. I prayed for her again. Now, Father, I ask you that you said you brought out this coma. Father, give her the strength to come off of this uh, 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 life support system. And Father, I just and I just begin to praise God, begin to thank God for it in the name of Jesus. And then I just and I said, okay, that's it. And I walked out again. And I came back the third time. I I went I went there and looked for her. And then they said she's no she's no longer here. And I thought the woman was dead. I thought the woman was dead, but she wasn't dead. And uh, and the nurse that been watching, the nurse been that, that, that been seeing everything that was going on. She said, "Oh, she's no longer in here. She's down in the recovery room. Would you like to go? Would you like to go down there with, and see visit her?" I said, "Sure." And I walked in their room. All the family was there. Amen. And they said, "Mama, Mama, this is the man that been praying for you." And and she said, "Come here, son. Give me a big hug." And, and I didn't know what I just wanted to give her a hug. Amen. Just like she had asked. And let me tell you something. It was the power of God. It was the power of God that set this woman free, that healed. And then after it was all over with, they told me that she was dead. And the doctors get the doctors get getting ready to take the take her, set her, take off the life support and everything, because she was dead. And I said, good thing y'all didn't tell me that before I prayed, because I never prayed. <laughs> Well, see now, I now I had this under my, I had this testimony now that I seen the dead race. Amen. That was my first time seeing a dead race. Amen. But but the same thing, God wants to use you because remember what He said: "Behold, I give unto you power." Amen. He said, Luke chapter ten, verse Luke chapter nine, 
Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. Behold, I give, he said, he called 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority. Amen. Power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. And to say unto them that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now, if God meant what he said, and he said what he meant, I believe that you can do the same thing that the apostles of old did. Because God never take, he has never taken his word out. He released it in the church so that the church can equip the people to go to reach the nations of the world. That word is still available today. That anointing is still available today. Everything that God has given is still available for you to operate in. Amen. That's why it's so important that we understand what he says here. Amen. Now, in Luke chapter, in the book of Mark chapter 16, in the book of Mark chapter 16, now this is where God got my attention when I was uh, sick. In Luke chapter 6, Luke, Mark chapter 16 is when I was very sick. I didn't have no money to go to the doctor. didn't have no insurance, nothing. Amen. I, all I had was my Bible. I had just been called to preach, and I was complaining to God, how, you, how can I preach your, your people? And I'm walking around in all this pain, holding my stomach, and, 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 and trying to preach your word. Amen. And I just started complaining to God. And I, one day I was just laying in my bed crying like a baby. I was in so much pain. I was crying like a baby. And a ball up in a knot, laying in my bed. Amen. And God, and I started crying, God, oh God, I need me. Oh God, heal me. Touch me. Oh God, I need a touch. Me. He said, get up and read your Bible. I mean, he spoke to me just like, just like he was my daddy. <laughs> he spoke to me, get up and read your Bible. I said, okay. <laughs> I looked, I ran to the door because I thought my brother or somebody there mess with me. Amen. But I went to the door. No one was there. And as I was heading back, to go back, I dealt back around and went to the window until I could catch him and try to slip back up to the door. But when I got when I went to the window, there was still no one there. And so I realized that the devil ain't gonna tell me to read my Bible. My brothers and sisters, they definitely not gonna tell me to read my Bible. Amen. So I remember what I heard, get up and read your Bible. So I got my Bible, I set up my ironing board, because I didn't have a desk at that time. So I set my iron board up and I set my Amplified Bible, my King James Bible, and my Living Bible, and the Matthew Henry Concordance. I laid them all across that iron board and I started reading. Because when I got to an area that I didn't understand, I used the Matthew Henry Concordance to help break it down so I could understand. Amen. And so, and I began to read. And I got in the book of Mark, chapter 16. Amen. And here I've read this in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. Verse number 17 says, no, verse number 15 says, I, I started, I got on verse number 15, and, it start, and, and the word of God started jumping off the page at me. Amen. Verse number 15 says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now see, that was a, a commandment that God gave me. It was not something that I just heard. God spoke to me, amen, through this word. And, and I'm telling you, I've been having a burning desire in my heart for the nations ever since. Amen. Then verse number 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse number 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's why it's so important that we hear what God said, and we stand on the promise of what God said, and we don't allow ourselves to detour from what God has said because the power is not in what we think that God said. The power is in what God actually said. Amen. It's in what he's actually said. Amen. That's why, that's why, that's why the book of Revelation said, don't alter this, don't, don't alter this book. You hold fast to what God has said. Amen. And don't try to detour from it. Amen. So it said, verse number 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they, what? Cast out devils. What he said, now what he said in, in the book of Luke chapter chapter two, chapter 9, verse number, verse number 1, He gave them power over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. So we see right here in, in Mark that he gave us, that he said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. Amen. So we've been given authority to cast out devils. You may not understand it. 
You don't need to understand it. You just got to know that God has given you authority over all devils. Amen. You don't have to put up with no devil. You don't have to play games with no devil. You can exercise that authority. You can speak to that devil and you can resist that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. He has to go. Submit to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And that's what the scripture said? It's true. It's true. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Amen. Amen. So now, so now look what it says right first, number 17 again. And these signs shall follow that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse number 18, they shall leave, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. I like this part. The latter part of verse number 18 says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When I saw that, that word really stood out to me. I said, what? And, and I said, and, that, and I started saying, well, God, I thought you were supposed to call for the elders. He, he, he said, yeah, you do call for the elders, but in, in a different setting. Amen. That's in a different setting. He said, but he said, this is, this is to the believer. This is to you as a believer when you don't have no elder around you, I'm giving you an alternative. I'm giving you an alternative that you can do what? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, who's going to do that? They that believe in my name. They that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I said, whoa, God, that's powerful. Amen. And that word, that word was jumping off the page and kept jumping off. And I just started reading it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Amen. Then all of a sudden, I began to understand by the spirit, not just my head, but my spirit started to understand what God is saying. And now I'm, I'm, I said, Lord, you mean telling me that I don't have to call for the elder? I don't have to call for an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher? You mean telling me I don't have to call for no one? And he said, read it again. Verse number 17 said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. I said, God, I'm a believer. Now, all of a sudden, I'm understanding what God is speaking to me. Amen. You ever, you know, you ever heard somebody try to explain something to you, and it took you a while to catch a hold of what he was saying, what he was saying to you? Well, that's the way it was with me with the, with the word of God at that point. But at the same time, my heart was, my heart was so, my spirit was so open to what God was saying that when he spoke, my, my spirit was grabbing it. But I'm still trying to figure it out. My mind's still trying to figure it out. My spirit was grappling, but my mind trying to figure it out. You see, that's why you have to go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it again so that your mind can catch up with your spirit. <clears throat> Amen. So that your mind can catch up with your spirit so that it will, and so you can reap the full benefit of what the word of God is saying to you. That's why he said, meditate therein, day and night, that you may prove what is that good, except the perfect will of God. Amen. So you got to meditate on that word because the life is in the word. And then what it said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my saying, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and help to all their flesh. Amen. And then guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. See, God knows how to bring us to that place where the word can work for us, but we got to be diligent. We got to be diligent in meditating on the word. It got to go beyond our mind and get into our spirit. Because when our spirit get a hold to it, when our spirit begin to understand it, our mind gonna become our mind is gonna it's gonna, it gonna play tricks on it because your spirit said, let's do it, let's do it. Your mind said, Oh, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna make no fool out of myself. Amen. Your spirit said, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. God said we can do it. Your mind said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go sit down and I'm going to have me a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm going to go back and so I'm going to go sit down. Amen. But no, don't allow yourself to be deceived. When God began to deal with your heart concerning his word, God means what he says. And he says what he means. And he wants you to take a bold step of faith. And he wants you to, to, to leap to, to, to come out of that comfort zone. I know it's comfortable there. And I know that you don't have to worry about being ridiculed as long as you stay there. But if you take that step of faith out of that comfort zone, you have a chance to be ridiculed. And you have a chance to see a miracle come to pass. What you want to do? You want to be ridiculed? You want to see the miracle? I want to see the miracle. I want to see the miracle. If I get ridiculed, fine. But let me see the miracle. Let me see the miracle. 
That's what I want to see. Amen. So that's what God wants you to come to. He wants you to come to the point that you, you don't, you're not going to be moved by what people say, what people say, think about you. Only thing that's going to move you is what the Word of God has said. And that's what's the most important thing. Knowing what God has said and acting upon it. Knowing what God has said and acting upon it. So he said, and these, in verse 18, and they shall take up serpent if they drink any dead thing, shall not hurt him. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, I kept reading that over and over and over again. And when I got it, I said, oh, my God, I see it. I see it. And I laid my Bible down. And I stood up in that house. Just me. <laughs> I stood up in that house. And I laid my Bible down on that iron board. I said, God, I see it. I said, God, I see it. You're not asking for the apostles. You're not asking for the prophets. You're not asking for the financial teachers or, or whosoever to come lay hands on you. You said, these signs will follow them that believe. I said, God, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Amen. And I said, body, I said, God, my body is sick. And you said, the believer shall lay hands on the sick. Oh, my God. I got that revelation straight from the Spirit of God. I didn't get that from no book, from no from, from, from what someone else wrote down. I got this revelation straight from the, from the Spirit of God. Amen. And and I began to apply that revelation. And lo and behold, I that sickness just left my body. I laid hands on my stomach and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I rebuke you off me. I command you to leave my body now. And Father, I release your healing power right into my body right now, in Jesus' name. Into my stomach, in Jesus' name. And and, and all of a sudden that pain just shoo, that pain just left me all of a sudden. And I started looking for it. I, I was so shocked. I started looking for that pain, and I couldn't find it. I started meshing on my stomach, <clears throat> but that pain was nowhere to be found. <clears throat> nowhere to be found. Amen. And from that day on, I've been ministering on divine health and healing. And shortly after that, because see, I used to have migraine headaches also. I used to have migraine headaches also. I applied that same principle to, my, to that migraine headache. I laid my hands on my head. I said, God, I know this pain didn't come from you. And in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this migraine headache. I rebuke it. I release your anointing, Father. I rebuke that devil off of me. This is not from you. This is the enemy trying to trying to attack me. I rebuke that devil off me. Now, Father, I, I, I lay hands upon my head right now. And I release your healing power. Your healing power right now, Father. And I thank you, Father. I receive my healing now. Glory to God. Then all of a sudden, that migraine headache just left. Just left. And it never came back. It tried. It tried. But one time, my wife and I, we were riding down the road. <laughs> we were riding down the road, and I, and that headache tried to come on me, and I started talking to her, because, see, she was, she, at that time, she was a mental health counselor. Amen. So I, I had to turn my head away from her when I started talking. Because she don't, she don't see people, they see you talking to yourself, they think you're crazy. Amen. So I had to turn my head away from her. I said, thank you, you get off me right now. <laughs> I'm talking to that devil. They're trying to, trying, trying to attack me. She said, she said, honey, is something wrong? Are you who are you talking to? I said, that's all right. I ain't talking about it. <laughs> and I turned my head back to the window and I said, get off me in Jesus' name. <laughs> and, uh, and then after it was all over with, because see, I don't, see, when you when you deal with a situation, you don't want someone to give you any negative input at that time. So that's why I wouldn't tell her what was going on. Amen. Because I don't know what she would have said. I got to keep faith working. Amen. I don't want nothing to interfere with my faith. So I didn't I didn't tell her what was what was happening until it was over. And I dealt with that migraine headache right there in the car while I'm driving. And it left me. And let me tell you something. From that point to from that day to this day, I've never had another migraine headache. Never had another migraine headache. Amen. Why? Because I do not accept it. It doesn't come from God, and I don't, I don't accept it. You can do the same thing. Amen. If you just have faith in God. Hallelujah. See, I'm just sharing this with you guys because I believe that God is getting ready to do something for you. God is getting ready to bring you to a place where you will experience His goodness and his mercies, amen. And when you do that, <clears throat> when you when you when you come to this place, you're gonna find out, amen, 
that God has given you power and authority over sicknesses and diseases. Amen. But you got to understand how to apply it. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to help you to understand tonight. Amen. To help you to understand when you when the, <clears throat> when sickness or something come upon your body, amen. When you first ex, when you first begin to experience it, don't just sit there and say, "Oh, I feel oh I feel like I'm getting a flu, or oh, I feel like I'm getting a cold, oh my kidney is messed up, my liver is all my God, oh my pancreas, is, oh something is going on with my sugar, I, I oh my God, no, you don't sit there and. Once you feel, when you notice something going on with your health, at that moment, you begin to exercise authority over it. Amen. Devil, you get your hand off me in the name of Jesus. My body, I, I, God, not, God, I'm walking in divine health. And devil, you're not going to take my, you're not going to take my health away from me. I refuse to let it go. In the name of Jesus, you get your hand off me now. In the name of Jesus. Father, i got a pain right here, God. But in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this pain. I command it to go now. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Father, I release your healing power. I release your healing power. See, you got to talk to that thing. You Don't you know that God has given you authority? And your authority is not operating through your eyes just by looking at stuff. Your authority is put in motion by the words out of your mouth. The words out of your mouth. It put the authority that God has given you into motion. Amen. Glory to God. And so right now, I just want to show, I just want to, I just want to get that across to you because you see, there are some people right now that you may be listening to this program and you deal with sickness and disease in your body right now. Amen. And you're thinking that you go to the doctor and he can give you all these bad reports, but you never went to God. And when you went to God, you didn't know exactly how to confront God with this issue. Amen. Instead of telling God, uh, instead of going to God saying, God, you bore my sickness, you came out of disease, you start telling God what the devil, what the doctor said. Well, God already knows what's been said. He wants you to he wants you to understand how to stand against what's been said. Amen. Amen. Because we already know what's been said. But we gotta we gotta counteract. So when the doctor told me five, four and a half years ago that I had cancer, Amen. I didn't say nothing to that doctor. I didn't even tell no one about it. But when I walked outside the door, I said, God, that doctor just lied on me. He said, I have cancer. And according to your word, that's not true. Folks, I don't have, that cancer never came, never came to be, oh my God, it never came, it never came alive in me. I didn't allow it to. I stood against it. Amen. You can stand against whatever disease, the sickness, whatever the thing that the devil trying to put upon you, you can take a stand against it and you can overcome it. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to release that anointing right now. There's been impartations been going forth all evening through this message. Amen. Because that's what this is all about. Releasing impartation. Amen. Now I'm going to release the anointing with the impartation upon everyone right now under the sound of my voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing now. And the impartation is going forth even now, Lord God. I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. They that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, let them hear. And let them receive, Father, by the Spirit. I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Anyone here need to be prayed for today? Anyone sick need to be prayed for? I pray for you right now. Anyone sick need to be prayed for? You're back? What's going to happen when I pray for you? You sure? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak to this spinal cord, Father. I speak to every disc and every vertebrate. I release shoulder, amen, galasotoro, woshikitai. I release the power of God right now in the name of Jesus. I release the power of God right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for it. I thank you for it, Father. Everything that the devil has meant for evil, Lord God, let it be turned around for your glory. Right now, in Jesus' name. 
Oh, thank you for it, Father. I give you glory for it. I receive that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, my offering just dropped off. What do you need prayer about? Um, yeah, this is for seed. I'm going to school. And also the, uh, I had a dream about a dream. I had a dream I saw my niece in a dream. Walking on the corner. Okay. And my mom told her, she was coming with a social worker. And she's harassing her. I'm saying, let's get her in the house. So you want me to pray about what? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord God, for divine protection over his mother. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against her will prosper, Lord God. Every demonic force that is working against her finances, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind, I loose, I bring it down from his throne now in Jesus' name. I release your anointing right now, Father. And Father, I pray, Father, over this envelope that is coming, Lord God. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would show yourself strong, Father. Bring about your greatest desire in my brother's heart so that he can carry out this assignment that you have given him. Father, I break every distraction from him right now in Jesus' name. And Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in his life in earth as it is in heaven. And God, I thank you that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, now we're going to take the offering. Amen. Those that want to sow a seed, now you can sow your seed. Amen. God is going to do something right now in your life. Just like you trust God for healing your body, trust him with your finances. LarryBurbyMinistries.com Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. You want to, so those that want to sow a seed, go to my website, LabRecommendTrees.com, or you can use your stamp in your envelope. You can send it through the mail. Address to Labrick Ministries at P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. Again, that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that as we prepare our heart, Father, to give today, Lord God, those that are with us and those that are online with us, Father, those that will hear this message even on a later day, Father, God, I pray that you will touch their hearts that they will sow into this anointing and receive the full benefits of what you have spoken to us in this word. Father, I bless your people. I thank you, Father, that every need is met concerning their lives because of their giving, Father. It is given back to them, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that men give back to their bosom according to your word. We believe it. That settles it. We act upon it by faith in Jesus' name. God bless you and receive off. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, shit, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we've prayed for everyone that needs prayer. I want to encourage you to come back on Tuesday tonight. Tuesday night is a powerful night with still teaching on the Holy Spirit. Right now we're teaching on the gifts that God gave the church by the Spirit. Amen. So this not this is something that you really want to get a hold to and apply to your life. Amen. It's powerful and it's good. It is rich. Amen. 
and in full of the presence of God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as we close this service for tonight, I release, Father, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to rest upon our hearts and our minds until we meet again on Tuesday night, God. I bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday night. Come and be blessed. Bye-bye.